In here we are doing something different. In a traditional classroom, students are usually the consumers of knowledge. The teacher gives them the information, they digest it, and then they use it later on. In my class, it looks a little bit different. We are the makers of knowledge. This is like your wilderness, like your playroom. What do you want to do? What do you want to solve? What's the next problem you want to attack and, uh, and make it happen? As we know, manufacturing is growing really rapidly at this point. So making sure that these students are prepared for careers that may not exist even today is what my priority is. You're starting from something, like sketching out an idea on paper, and then we get that sketch digitally converted and then brought into easel and image trace. And now you've taken this thing that you did by hand and now you've got it in some sort of workspace and you can do things with it in that workspace that you can't do with it on paper. You're able to now manipulate it and get sort of a visual representation of what this thing might look like, but you're still in this software space. It's still this virtual world and it's really cool. It's not made yet and you're almost there, but you're not there yet. The learning curve is very, very short for easel because it's such a simple app. As soon as they open it, 5, 10, 15 minutes, they're ready to create stuff on Easel and then sending it to Carvey, making it awesome. This is all, all happens in here in, in a class because of these tools and access to these tools now being possible. Before it would be, hey, can we get a $300,000 machine in here? The answer is usually no, especially in a school, in a public school too. 3D carving is also great because of the speed that students can make stuff with. They jump on a computer, it's very quick to design, it's very quick to send to the carving, and then the process of carving, comparing to 3D printing, compares much, much more last time than it would take them to build something on a 3D printer. And I think that's probably the most mesmerizing thing about it. If it's just going to carve a square, I might be like, okay, it carved a square, but to see this thing with such flow and precision following the design they had, and then they've got all of a sudden this perfect replication of what their idea was in physical form. Carvey really enables students to take their ideas to real life. It's really great because it's just very safe for students to use. It allows them to make a lot of things in a short period of time. But, and here we have this beautiful sort of Venn diagram middle of art and engineering and math and physics and sciences and programming and hardware stuff and manipulating physical things and turning virtual ideas into, into reality. And I think that what tools like Easel and Carvey are doing is showing kids that there's a creative aspect to technology that they're not used to seeing. They're proud of it and they can, they're, they're like, they're re-proud of it when they see it again. So they see and they know what they went through to make it happen and they can hold it and they can, be, and they can sort of relive the creative experience that they had. I'm Jeff Solon. I am a computer science and making teacher and robotics coach and father and musician and husband and terrible skateboarder and beard grower in the Chicago Public Schools at Lane Tech High School. My name is Peter Vitajic and I'm a 6th through 8 design teacher at Pulaski International School of Chicago and we make stuff.